Isaiah, chapter 63 to 66. Who is this that has come from Edom, with red garments from Bosor? Thus fair is his apparel, with mighty strength. I speak of righteousness and saving judgment. Wherefore are thy garments red, and thy raiment as if fresh from a trodden winepress? I am full of trodden grape, and of the nations there is not a man with me. I trampled them in my fury, and dashed them to pieces as earth, and brought down their blood to the earth. For the day of recompense has come upon them, and the year of redemption is at hand. And I looked, and there was no helper, and I observed, and went out of hell. Therefore my arm delivered them, and my anger drew nigh. And I trampled them in my anger, and brought down their blood to the earth. I remember the mercy of the Lord, the praises of the Lord in all things wherein he recompenses us. The Lord is a good judge to the house of Israel. He deals with us according to his mercy, and according to the abundance of his righteousness. And he said, Is it not my people? The children surely will not be rebellious. And he came to them in deliverance out of all their affliction. Not an ambassador, nor a messenger, but himself saved them, because he loved them and spared them. He himself redeemed them, and took them up, and lifted them up all the days of old. But they disobeyed and provoked his Holy Spirit. So he turned to be an enemy. He himself contended against them. Then he remembered the ancient days, saying, Where is he that brought up from the sea the shepherd of the sheep? Where is he that put his Holy Spirit in them, who led Moses with his right hand the arm of his glory? He forced the water to separate from before him, to make himself an everlasting name. He led them through the deep, as a horse through the wilderness, and they fainted not. And as cattle through the plain, the Spirit came down from the Lord, and guided them. Thus thou leddest thy people, to make thyself a glorious name. Turn from heaven, and look from thy holy habitation, and from thy glory. Where is thy zeal and thy strength? Where is the abundance of thy mercy, and of thy compassions, that thou hast withhold thyself from us? For thou art our Father, for as though Abraham knew us not, and Israel did not acknowledge us. Yet do thou, O Lord, our Father, deliver us. Thy name has been upon us from the beginning. Why hast thou caused us to err, O Lord, from thy way? And hast hardened our hearts, that we should not fear thee. Return for thy servants' sake, for the sake of the tribes of thine inheritance, that we may inherit a small part of thy holy mountain. We are become as at the beginning, when thou didst not rule over us. Thy name was not called upon us. If thou wouldest open the heaven, trembling will take hold upon the mountains from thee, and they shall melt, as wax melts before the fire, and fire shall burn up the enemies, and thy name shall be manifest among the adversaries. At thy presence the nation shall be troubled, whenever thou shalt work gloriously, trembling from thee shall take hold upon the mountains. From of old we have not heard, neither have our eyes seen a God beside thee, and thy works which thou wilt perform, to them that wait for mercy. For these blessings shall happen to them that work righteousness, and they shall remember thy ways. Behold, thou wast angry, and we have sinned. Therefore we have erred, and we are all become as unclean, and all our righteousness is a filthy rag, and we have fallen as leaves because of our iniquities. Thus the wind shall carry us away, and there is none that calls upon thy name, or that remembers to take hold on thee. For thou hast turned thy face away from us, and hast delivered us up because of our sins. And now, O Lord, thou art our Father, and we are clay. All of us the work of thine hands. Be not very wroth with us. Remember not our sins forever. But now look on us, for we are all thy people. The city of thy holiness has become desolate. Zion has become as a wilderness. Jerusalem a curse. The house, our sanctuary, and the glory which our fathers blessed, has been burnt with fire, and all our glorious things have gone to ruin. And for all these things thou, O Lord, hast withholden thyself, and been silent and has brought us about very low. I became manifest to them that asked not for me. I was fond of them that sought me not. I said, Behold, I am here to a nation who called not on my name. I have stretched forth my hands all day to a disobedient and gainsaying people, to them that walked in a way that was not good, but after their sins. This is the people that provokes me continually in my presence. They offer sacrifices in gardens, and burn incense on bricks to devils, which exist not. They lie down to sleep in the tombs and in the caves for the sake of dreams. Even they that eat swine's flesh, and the broth of their sacrifices, all their vessels are defiled, who say, Depart from me, draw not nigh to me, for I am pure. And this is the smoke of my wrath. A fire burns with it continually. Behold, it is written before me. I will not be silent until I have recompensed into their bosom. 
their sins, and the sins of their fathers, saith the Lord, who have burned incense on the mountains, and reproached me on the hills. I will recompense their works into their bosom. Thus saith the Lord, As a grape stone shall be found in the cluster, and they shall say, Destroy it not, for a blessing is in it. So will I do for the sake of him that serves me. For his sake I will not destroy them all. And I will lead forth the seed that came of Jacob and of Judah, and they shall inherit my holy mountain, and mine elect and my servant shall inherit it, and shall dwell there. And there shall be in the forest folds of flocks, and the valley of Achor shall be for a resting place of herds for my people, who have sought me. But ye are they that have left me, and forget my holy mountain, and prepare a table for the devil, and fill up the drink offering to fortune. I will deliver you up to the sword. Ye shall all fall by slaughter, for I called you, and ye hearkened not. I spoke, and ye refused to hear, and ye did evil in my sight, and chose the things wherein I delighted not. Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold, my servant shall eat, but ye shall hunger. Behold, my servant shall drink, but ye shall thirst. Behold, my servant shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Behold, my servant shall exult with joy, but ye shall cry for the sorrow of your heart, and shall howl for the vexation of your spirit. For ye shall leave your name for a loathing to my chosen, and the Lord shall destroy you. But my servant shall be called by a new name, which shall be blessed on the earth. For they shall bless the true God, and they that swear upon the earth shall swear by the true God. For they shall forget the former affliction, and it shall not come into their mind. For there shall be a new heaven and a new earth, and they shall not at all remember the former, neither shall they at all come into their mind, but they shall find in her joy and exultation. For behold, I make Jerusalem rejoicing, and my people of joy. Now rejoice in Jerusalem, and will be glad in my people. There shall no more be heard in her the voice of weeping, or the voice of crying. Neither shall there be there any more a child that dies untimely, or an old man who shall not complete his time. For the youth shall be a hundred years old, and the sinner who dies at a hundred years shall also be accursed. And they shall build houses, and themselves shall dwell in them. And they shall plant vineyards, and themselves shall eat the fruit thereof. They shall by no means build, and others inhabit. And they shall by no means plant, and others eat. For as the days of the tree of life shall be the days of my people, they shall long enjoy the fruits of their labors. My chosen shall not toil in vain, neither shall they beget children to be cursed. For they are a seed blessed of God, and their offspring with them. And it shall come to pass, that before they call, I will hearken to them, while they are yet speaking. I will say, What is it? Then wolves and lambs shall feed together, and the lion shall eat chaff like the ox, and the serpent earth as bread. They shall not injure nor destroy in my holy mountain, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. What kind of house will ye build for me? And of what kind is to be the place of my rest? For all these things are mine, saith the Lord. And to whom will I have respect, but to the humble and meek, and the man that trembles at my words? But the transgressor that sacrifices of calf to me is as he that kills a dog, and he that offers fine flour as one that offers swine's blood. He that gives frankincense for a memorial is as a blasphemer. Yet they have chosen their own ways, and their soul has delighted in their abominations. I also will choose their mockeries, and will recompense their sins upon them, because I called them, and they did not hearken to me. I spoke, and they heard not, and they did evil before me, and chose the things wherein I delighted not. Hear the words of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word. Speak ye, our brethren, to them that hate you, and abominate you, that the name of the Lord may be glorified, and may appear their joy, that they shall be ashamed. A voice of a cry from the city, a voice from the temple, a voice of the Lord rendering recompense to his adversaries. Before she the travail brought forth, before the travail pain came on, she escaped it and brought forth a male. Who has heard such a thing, and who has seen after this manner? Has the earth travailed in one day, or has even a nation been born at once, that Sion has travailed and brought forth her children? But I have raised this expectation, yet thou hast not remembered me, saith the Lord. Behold, have not I made the bearing and barren woman, saith thy God? Rejoice, O Jerusalem, and all ye that love her, hold in her a general assembly. Rejoice greatly with her, all that now mourn over her, that ye may suck and be satisfied with the breast of her consolation, that ye may milk out and delight yourselves with the influx of her glory. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I turn toward them as a river of peace, and as a torrent bring upon them in a flood the glory of the Gentiles. Their children shall be borne upon the shoulders and comforted on the knees. As if his mother should comfort one, so will I also comfort you, and ye shall be comforted in Jerusalem. 
and ye shall see, and your heart shall rejoice, and your bones shall thrive like grass, that the hand of the Lord shall be known to them that fear him, and ye shall threaten the disobedient. For behold, the Lord will come as fire, and his chariots as a storm, to render his vengeance with wrath, and his rebuke with a flame of fire. For with the fire of the Lord all the earth shall be judged, and all flesh with his sword. Many shall be slain by the Lord. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens, and eat swine's flesh in the porches, and the abominations, and the mouse, shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. And I know their works, and their imagination. I am going to gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. And I will leave a sign upon them, and I will send forth them that have escaped of them to the nations, to Tharsis, and Fud, and Lud, and Mosach, and to Thobal, and to Greece, and to the isles afar off, to those who have not heard my name, nor seen my glory. And they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. And they shall bring your brethren out of all the nations for a gift to the Lord with horses, and chariots, and litters drawn by mules with awnings, to the holy city Jerusalem, saith the Lord. As though the children of Israel should bring their sacrifices to me with psalms into the house of the Lord. And I will take of them priests and Levites, saith the Lord. For as the new heaven and the new earth, which I make, remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name continue. And it shall come to pass from month to month, and from Sabbath to Sabbath, that all flesh shall come to worship before me in Jerusalem, saith the Lord. And they shall go forth, and see the carcasses of the men who have transgressed against me, for their worm shall not die, and their fire shall not be quenched, and they shall be a spectacle to all flesh. The Epistle of St. Paul the Apostle to the Hebrews, Chapter 7 For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham, returning from the slaughter of the kings, and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation, king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace, without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. Now consider how great this man was, unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of spoils. And verily, they that are the sons of Levi, who receive the office of the priesthood, have a commandment to make tithes of the law of the people according to the law, that is, of their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham. But he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham, and blessed him that had the promises. And without all the contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. And here men that die receive tithes, but there he receiveth them, of whom it is witnessed that he liveth. And as I may also so say, Levi also, who receiveth tithes, paid tithes in Abraham. For he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek, and not be called after the order of Aaron? For the order of the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe, of which no man gave attendance at its altar. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning the priesthood. And it is yet far more evident, for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there arises another priest, who is made, not after the law of carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. For he testifieth, Thou art a priest for ever, after the order of Melchizedek. For there is verily a disannulling of the commandments going before, for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. The law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by which we draw nigh unto God. And inasmuch as not without an oath he was made priest. For those priests were made without an oath. But this with an oath by him that said unto him, The Lord swear and will not repent. Thou art a priest for ever, after the order of Melchizedek. By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. And they truly were many priests, because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But this man, because he continued with forever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him. Seeking he ever liveth to make intercession for them.
for such a high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who needeth not daily, as those high priests, to offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins, and then for the people's. For this he did once, when he offered up himself. For the law maketh men high priests, which have infirmity. But the word of the oath, which was since the law, maketh the Son, who is consecrated forevermore.